That's right. He carries a stadium pal with him. Ah, Tamusilin, you've done your job again. <laughs> uh, give my give my best to your urologist. Here we go. <laughs> In three, two, one. I see you've got some balls, but you're going to regret it when I chop your head off with my axe. Here's another example of sheer brute force. This is the morning stream, and we're going to need a bigger boat. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to TMS. It's the morning stream for May 17th, 2021. I'm Scott Johnson with Brian Ibbett. Hi, Brian. Hi, Scott. How are you? Okay. It's a short week for us. We're gone Thursday. Uh... Right. On separate mini vacations. Um, now, now it's a good time to clarify this yeah. uh, during the show. It's very, yeah, <laughs> you know, we're not? gone Friday. Uh, are we also gone Thursday? Oh, are we? I don't know. I thought you were gone on Thursday morning. Aren't you gone? You're not. Gone. No, we leave Thursday afternoon. Now oh. I, you know, could you use the extra time? Is the I question? could use the extra time to get the freelance done that that'll need to be done this week. But I, if you were expecting a Thursday, if if Wendy was expecting a Thursday show, she's not. I told if her our we listings were. were yeah, I told Thursday her we show. weren't because uh, because of this trip. But I thought it was because you had to fly early. But I say we just take Thursday off and call it a, call it a day to prep for your trip. Let's do that. Yeah. Prep for our trips, Scott. Our tri- our trips. Up there, it's it's their time. Down here, it's our trips. Our trips. Uh, <laughs> mine's not much of a trip. It's to a place called Midway. Uh, beautiful place here in Utah. But Brian is going to Las Vegas, Nevada, and so, you know, yeah. we're we're for the first time in a very long time. Both of us are getting a little time away and enjoying yeah, a little time. First off, time so. getting on a plane in. Uh, let's see. Last flight I took. Was it Vegas? It might have been Vegas in uh, August of 2019. So, is that your last trip? I think the, my your last, last trips are trip. 20 yeah. months. Oh my I gosh, think. that's crazy! I love that Vegas yeah. was the last place you went, and now the next place you're going. That's great. Yeah, it's it's a nice bookend. Booking bookending the pandemic with uh, uh, the Sin City. Yeah. Perfect. Feels like something you in particular should do. <laughs> Uh, so busy weekend yes. here in the Johnson house. Uh, we had a bit of a four alarmer on Friday. I think it was Friday. Yeah, because I watched uh-huh. FilmSec after this event. And then I forgot to talk to you guys on Saturday about it, but it was pretty intense. Um, we get this door, this this like frantic door knock at around, huh? I don't know, th- three in the afternoon or something. Just bam, 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 bam. And we run up to the front door and swing it open. And, and there's this 14-year-old girl standing there, a neighbor. And she says, um, my dad's like bleeding all over the place. And oh my God. I was hoping maybe you could help me with that. You know, she was, she didn't know how to quite explain it, but she said her dad yeah. cut himself and needed help. And she I, was trying to word it in a way that didn't also incriminate herself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I, uh, and I know these people, um, they're, they're, they're great. Uh, I just didn't want to use any names, but anyway, she comes to the door, knocks and we went full Johnson emergency mode. Like freaking mm-hmm. rope, like like uh, like Voltron. We came together as one robot. Right. Me Mobilized and Kim. unit. Chunk, chunk. Uh, and Kim goes, "All right, let's go. You go the back way. I'll go around the front. All right, sweet. We go over there, and here he is, laying in his garage with his leg up, blood everywhere. Mm. And the story is, he he was cutting some pipe, and I don't. This is not a euphemism, okay? He was actually <laughs> cutting pipe. Sure. And uh, he had a pipe cutter saw thing. And this pipe on two, I don't know what they were, two vice grip based stands. And he was cutting the edge of it off and it jumped. He lost control mm. of it in his hand. It flipped around, hit him once in the calf and then dropped down and hit him another Ooh. time lower right before his ankle on the kind of meaty side of the leg. And uh, hit something major because just blood everywhere. My gosh. It was oh, my a lot God. Of blood. Yeah. Now, blood doesn't bother me. I don't know why. It never does. Never had a mm. problem with it. People who faint at the sight of blood or, even, or, or you know, just get weak, uh, queasy or what. I don't get any of that. I just, mm-hmm. it's whatever. Um, Kim either. It's not a problem. So so we immediately go, all right, let's uh, get your leg in the air. Okay, sweet. Uh, grab that uh, towel. We tell the daughter, and she runs over there and grabs a the towel. <clears throat> I said, Kim, grab the the duct tape. We need duct tape. So she grabs duct tape and we wrap the towel around the, the wound areas as tight as we can because, you know, you always learn you got to put pressure right on the on the yes. on the bleeder. Right. 
Right. So we right. so we do that and we wrap it with this duct tape. So now he's looking like a <laughs> all that mash training finally uh, <laughs> paying off. I know. How that many mash, damn mash see, viewing. how many reviews of match mash did I have to see before I got to actually use this? <laughs> but anyway, <Suction. laughs> we, so we did that and stopped the bleeding. So that was good. And um, he was in shock. Clearly, um, he, he was he was cogent. You know, we could talk to him and stuff, but sure. you could tell. Like the way he was kind of shaking and moving, he was he was entering shock or some form of shock, and so, you know, got him comfortable, uh, leg above his head, sort of stuff, and and uh, so then we were like, all right, let's get some towels. We're gonna get in our car because his wife's gone. We don't know where she is. She's out on errands or something. We're like, okay, no one can drive here. You're 14, so you're not taking him anywhere. And uh, of course, here in the United States, first thing he has to think about is. Oh, do I want to do an ER or should I go to like a mm, instant thing? God, doesn't that suck that we it actually suck. we have to weigh? Oh, uh, my leg has been uh, nearly severed. Oh, yeah. Shoot, do I want to? What do I want to do insurance wise? Yeah, because you oh. should have. This, I mean, I would have gone to the ER, but he also is living on a very limited income. He's like sixty-two years old. He's got, you know. He's got other reasons why that might be a problem, and he may not be able to afford the thousands of dollars that'll charge him if he goes to the ER. So, so uh, he opted to go to this like some his insurance has some emergency clinic thing that's probably probably a an okay call. Like, had his leg been dangling from a string, ER would have been the way. Mm-hmm. But the, as deep as the cut was. I see why he aired on the side of this other clinic thing. It was his call, though. Yeah, but like again, urgent care. You said, did you say it's like an care? urgent care, but different name? Yeah. I don't remember the name of it. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So anyway, that's where I went when I stabbed my hand during yeah. the pandemic. Right. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Uh, yeah. So I had to look to see which which hand was it again. It's like, oh yeah, the one with the the big scar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. But this is you know the state of the United States freaking healthcare system. You have to weigh your freaking financial options every time anything yeah. bad happens to you. But Anyway, so he, uh, we're, we're getting him ready to load him into Kim's car, which ironically we just cleaned, but we're thinking, all right, a little blood, whatever. We're saving a guy's life. Let's do this. Let's go. And, so um, can't stay clean forever. <laughs> we started to do it. And then, uh, his wife shows up right then. And boy, does she have the look of a ghost face when she walked in? She couldn't believe what was going on. She's like, what the frick is going on in here? There's blood all over the garage. And he's like, oh, so then she's like, well, no, I'll take him. Let's put him in the van or whatever they have. And, and so we're like, oh, okay, well, they don't need us for this. All right, let's let's load them up, load them up. All right, we're bringing food over later. Who needs it? Uh, Kim says to whoever. Uh, <laughs> you know, we got the whole plan. Everything's good. Of we're course. We're running around. Yes. Kim's like, you need to move my car, Scott. You need to move my car so they can get out of here. And I'm like, all right, I'll get in the car. And I back the car up, and there's no, at the back alley sort of road where we live, there's no double space. So I got I to gotta park it off somewhere. Sure. So I sure. parked it just a little bit on our back lawn, our, our like side lawn thing. Not too bad, but yeah. just on there. And then uh-huh. while you all get done, they leave, a uh, trail of blood is intense, everyone's freaking out. And then Kim looks at me, she looks at the car and she goes, you had to park it on the grass? <laughs> <laughs> like it was an emergency! Right, right. I was in the pool! No, but anyway, so she, uh, <laughs> she, she, she was fine, it was no big deal. I was careful about, you know, not hitting sprinklers or whatever, but. Did you at least uh, set the emergency brake? I did do that, yeah. Good, and okay. pulled it another notch or two just to just to annoy her <laughs> but uh anyway bo- uh, end of the day that was just uh, it was a little crazy but uh sometimes it feels good man sometimes you need an emergency to like get your to really get your adrenaline out and like get yeah. like back into it like a mode of like all right nothing else matters right now but this problem and there's something about that focus yeah that's a real break during the pandemic where you have a million concerns worries thoughts feelings and they're mm-hmm. spread all over the place and they're all slow but in this case it's like Guy's leg is half severed. He's bleeding everywhere. You have to do these four things in a row, and there's no deviation. And you can't think of anything else. Like, there's something about that I really liked. It's, it's also like a a self-contained thing. It's not like a all right. Now we've done this. Now we have to wait two weeks to be able to do that. And or you know, is this going to change or is that going to change? It's like nope. We're presented with a problem. We fixed it. The problem is is at least on our part solved. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's he's got a little bit of work still left to do, but. Uh, yeah. It's true. Uh, yeah, it's it's nice to have a a self con- a, a one episode problem. There you go. Could be started and, and finished. In exactly. One no no overarching story. I mean, other yes. than I can give you a little follow up. He's he's home and well, and is just resting that leg, and uh, his work crutch. is giving him a little time off. <laughs> yeah, he's on a crutch, and but uh-huh. they didn't hit any veins that would be considered yeah. you know massive. I think in the end it was like twelve external stitches and a few internal. 
so a lot oh, a fair yeah. amount yeah but uh but he's okay and the bottom line is don't cut your own pipe that's the that's the lesson exactly exactly what kind of uh, casserole What's the what's the sorry you almost lost your leg flavor of casserole that uh, Kim brought Kim, over? Kim's more of a I'll cook you an entire chicken, stuff it full of stuff. <laughs> she doesn't go cheap. That's even better. That's better than a casserole. Yeah, Good. she goes kind of crazy. Yeah. But uh, that's awesome. But yeah, it was uh, it was a hell of a thing. And then the rest of the weekend just felt normal. And I don't know, it kind of threw me. I think I think what happened is I always have these delayed reactions. So you know, Friday slept fine, no issues, whatever. But Saturday, it was like it caught up with me, the intensity of it. And I just, I could not sleep on Saturday. Just save my freaking life. Just could not sleep. Weird. Yeah. yeah. Last night, no problem. Slept fine. So. Yeah. Oh, my God. Last night was the first night in a long time that I got a really good night's sleep. Now, for you, that's um, what, three and a half hours? What, 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 what we got there? <laughs> Last night, like, uh, whatever 10.30 to 5.45 a.m. would be. Uh, so... Let's see, 10.30 to 5.30 would be seven hours, seven hours, 15 minutes. Oh, that's pretty good. That's great for me. Are you kidding me? That's like... That's a long night. <laughs> I feel like I overslept, Scott. Is, uh, situation. I, I, actually, now that I, mean, I think about it, I don't know the last time I had seven straight. That's really strong. Yeah. Granted, I had uh, Friday night, had tequila, so we went to meet some friends of ours who gave us, or they're lending me, and I'll show it to you. Yeah, you got something there? See what you got. Oh, I love show and tell. Here we go. This guy right here. Oh, this my is... Lord. Oh, the Super 8 converter thing. The Super 8, 8-millimeter uh, Super 8 converter does both kinds. And uh, it's the the Wolverine. Oh, the Wolverine. I'm the best at what I do. And what I do is is convert 8-millimeter uh, films to, <laughs> to digital. That's awesome. So where did you... So apparently you got a bunch of old footage of, like, what? When you were a little kid or something? Or... Even before, before I was even born. So oh, wow. 60s, the box that I've got is all 60s stuff, yep. um, which is all stuff before I was born. And so the, the one video that I know we've got somewhere is not in this box. And so that tease I had last week may be teased for a little bit longer because I'm not oh. seeing. Well, I take that back. The, the little box is the little eight millimeter, um, like three inch reels of video all have dates on it from like 1963 to 1967 right and uh i've already done i've already converted a few of them there was a disneyland one in there right oh with my cool. mom and my dad before you know 67 two years before i was born going with my grandparents and my uncle and uh uh they went to disneyland and all they took video of was freaking tom sawyer island I mean, was that the big thing in the 60s? Was that like a hot attraction or something? Well, Matt, you can see Matterhorn in the background. I'm like, oh, get some shots of Matterhorn. But, <laughs> you know, based on what I saw, it looks like they went right through Disneyland to Mark Twain uh, River and then said, oh, let's spend the entire day uh, walking around trees and into cabins. Wow. Wow. Well, maybe it's because... I don't know. I don't. Uh, those old cameras. Could you t easily take them on a log flume or take? Them no, on? you wouldn't be able to take them on the rides. But but at least you could, you know, get some video from the base of the ride where the yeah the little cars splash down and stuff. That was the format of that era, though. If you were making home video, yeah. you were doing it, was it on Super Eight, 8. millimeter. Yeah. Yeah, and and those things uh, uh, <laughs> for, for that entire reel, uh, three minutes. Like, mm -hmm. if the reel is full, full from tape to uh, end to end, mm -hmm. um, it's it's about three minutes worth of video. Mm. And it takes about, I don't know, half an hour to convert on this thing. Because basically, it just goes frame by frame and scans each frame and then assembles them. Oh, wow. That's very cool. Yeah. Uh, it is cool. It's fun. It's really crazy seeing all these old videos of uh, my grandparents and my mom and my uncle and I need to, stuff. I need to do... Um all of that i need to go find my stuff see what's see what's what like I, i'm right now i'm showing the chat room an old video of me at a soccer game these are all super mm. eight but i was like maybe i don't know not even a, not even three months old or something four three wow. four months old is all and then so these have got, 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 gotten converted but whoever did them did them at like uh freaking four by three 360 you know was pixel you know the smallest freaking dvd resolution you can do oh yeah yeah yeah. so like super pixelated and stuff yeah these aren't these aren't great either i mean i could 
and I don't know if maybe there's a way for, you know, there's all this talk of like, um, ups, you know, AI based upscaling of old video and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I would love to, I don't know, I'd love to do some of that with this stuff. But anyway, oh, there's them going to the hospital having me. There's me getting my wiener out. Look at you guys, <laughs> my wiener. It's my baby wiener. Look. Baby wiener. Oh, great. Great. Yep. Right there. Yep. Aren't you glad you tuned in today? Everyone at home's like, yeah. what? Yeah. See, like, if I give you, I'll give you a, um, just a frame from this. With the movement, it's, it's a lot better. You know, as you see the video moving, it looks a lot better than it does there. But, boy, you freeze frame it, and... Um, oh, here we go. Yeah. Oh, wow. Discord. Yeah. It's, uh, it's uh, weird, right? It's like... Uh, Who's that back there going? Rah! That's not. That is my uncle George. Is that in, George? in one of the tree houses on Tom Sawyer Island screaming? That's my dad walking uh, up the stairs, the yellow shirt. Yeah, he's got the good look. And going. I think, who's the lady? I think that's my grandmother uh, Josephine, actually. Huh. Yeah. That's they had crazy. horses horseback riding at Disneyland at one point. Did they? I don't. Yeah. That. that seems like yeah. a, a definitely a thing they probably used to do. Yeah, but they don't do it anymore. <laughs> yeah, I mean they opened in '55, so I mean this was this was uh, like 12 years after they opened that uh, that they went there. So, I mean it was before. I think Space Mountain was early '70s. Uh, yeah, or somewhere somewhere in there. I remember that being new yeah. when I was young enough to remember someone talking about it being new. Okay, mm-hmm. like '74, '75, something like that. It felt like mm-hmm. it was around. Well, that would have been much later, though. Wouldn't have been around Star Wars. I don't know. But uh, all I know uh, is that's that's a famous ride now because that's where my kids refused to get on, and Carter thought she'd throw up if she got on it. So 1975 is when Space Mountain opened. Oh, 75. So, wow. Right in the middle. Yeah, there, there you go. Right in the middle. All right, then. Uh, well, now I've shown the chat room my wiener for the first time. And uh, <laughs> and if you think it looked big then. <laughs> <just kidding>. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, by the way, Claire in the chat room thinks I'm drinking uh, Monster. I'm not. I don't know where she's getting that. I have a. I have a tea in here, and I don't have a monster. She thinks it's a monster can. Oh, or, it's that dark green. It's the monster can color. Oh, is that one. So if you're, yeah, if you're viewing it on a, you know, and and it's funny because the way the light hits it, it almost looks like it's the two pieces of the M. Oh, oh, I can see the that. Two then. arms of the M. Yeah. All right. Well, I was going to blame the Irish, but once again, it's all fine. <laughs> hey, a quick reminder that tonight, today, it's not really night for me, but it will be when I'm done, uh, begins the foray of the what we're going to call the Resident Evil 8 live scream. Nice. <laughs> Quiver! Quiver! Yeah, I'm sure that's been used a million times. But um, anyway, that starts tonight at 4 p.m. Mountain Time. Uh, John Jagger will be there to provide guidance slash commentary. He's beat the game three times so wow he's, he's an insane person i don't what? know how he did oh, that like already yeah Thing in just the, came out i know in like the week and whatever uh or so he he's beaten it and i want to say a run through that thing the first run through that's like 16 hours it's a pretty big game so i don't know how he did it how he Jeez. fit it all in but he did and uh he loves it and as a result now knows everything about it so he'll know when i'm about to do something dumb or oh uh, you know, good yeah yeah so he can he can just like wait for it wait for it <laughs> yeah that's all true that's so tonight is the night and um i want to thank badger lord again for donating the game for that is the reason why i allow this to happen at all <laughs> and uh if you show up you'll hear things like <laughs> and much more so <laughs> come join us today 4 p.m mountain time we'll do it every monday at four until we're done and i'll put the whole thing up on youtube as well so oh, that's great watch for that okay Let's say you to some, uh, what if I smeared a little Dunaway on your bread? How would that feel? Smear a little a generous helping of Dunaway on my bread. Sweet. I'm going to do that then. Ew. And, uh, yeah, pretty gross. But uh, <clears throat> nonetheless, he's he's a, he's great on your bread or otherwise. So here we go. Oh, look who it is, everybody. It's our old pal Brian Dunaway. Hi. Hey. Hello. Oh. <laughs> Oh, hey. Oh, Hello. hi. Hi. Oh, hi. hi, Scott. Are you there? Hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had so many different greetings thrown at me at once. It was greetings. A lot. Hello. Hi. It was Except a lot. that one time one I called them. iOS. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Hey, are you at work? You're, <laughs> are you at work right now, right? Scott, why? I know, but here's why I got to ask you. you. <laughs> I got a reason. The reason you're at work, the reason I ask is because 
I know that you you happen to work in something that's sort of governmental ish. Yes, yes, could I you, do indeed. Could you take the town down with the stroke of a key, or if you got into the absolutely right... not? Oh. I do not hold that kind of power. Oh well, I was sure that there was so a... so no no sense in kidnapping me. Yeah, <laughs> don't nobody take. No one puts Brian. Now in a I don't know corner. what you think I am exactly like in some kind of. The 1960s Batman villain where I'm trying to poison the water tank. But no, okay. as there, there is no advantage to me at my current uh, staffing yeah, over any other it, lunatic though? that would decide to do such a thing. Well, that's what I'm asking. Like, if you wanted to go rogue one day, you're just like, man, I'm sick right. of this place. I'm going to I'm gonna leave my mark, and I'll, everyone will remember the name <laughs> Brian Dunaway for here and forever. What I mean, you could do something, right? I, I'm sure I'm sure I could, but I mean, why would I? I don't know. I mean, okay, so it's like this: we're so well set up. We've we've covered our, we've covered ourselves so many times uh, that even if I decided, I'm like, you know what? I'm deleting so and so's emails. I'm deleting all of them. Mm. Doesn't matter. Offsite, all that stuff uh, is archived elsewhere. Gotcha. It doesn't matter what I do. Okay. I could cause some havoc like for a day, right. but you know, then the police would come get me. And I wouldn't have done anything yeah. other than paint myself, you know, paint my face white and laugh. <laughs> yeah, like the, like the Joker. Sure. Right. What if you? Uh, that, what if you laid a? What if you laid a, 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 a dropped a turd in the break room? How much trouble did you? Now get in I that? have accidentally dropped my, uh, uh, you know, a baby Ruth in the, you know, in a, in a sink full of water. <laughs> oh, I gotcha. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm like, oops, sorry I about that. Should, I should no. leave that in there. <laughs> And I'm like, sorry about that. Then I pick it up and eat it, and everybody freaks out, and it's okay. Yeah, that's totally. But that's more that's more psychological warfare than I, than anything, really. Sure, or scatological yeah. warfare. Sure. Yeah. Um, yes, all right, we have. Uh, I think we have a listener on the line. Although right now I see their ring of rings of speakage are really loud. So let's see how this goes. Oh God. Oh, this isn't bad. Oh, they hung up. Oh, oh they, got they must have left the baby Ruth. They they had this like I didn't I had it muted so I didn't. Uh, pick it up right away, but I'm glad I didn't because it looked like it was full blast. Like something was really uh -oh. loud, and I don't know if it was right, them. Like you see the full all the way up to the red. Just, yeah, yeah it was bad. But let's see how this one goes. This is a different one. Hi, thanks for holding. Who's this? Hi, this is Brooke from Ohio. Well, hello, Brooke from Ohio. Hey, Brooke. How, how the heck are you? I'm really good. Oh, that's fantastic. This is my yeah. first time calling in, and it, I got. I right know. We love hearing a new name. I know. It's that we were, Brian and I were just talking yesterday about how, you know, we want to hear more. We want more diversity, more people than the same 10 people. And look, first day, exactly. here's somebody new. This is great. Oh. Yeah. Well, welcome, awesome. to the, welcome to the show. We're really glad to have you here. Brian's going to explain how it works, what you could win, and how this game plays. Brian? Well, before you do that, Brooke, what part of Ohio are you from? I'm from the Dayton area. Ah, uh, the Daily News. The Dayton Daily News. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Do, do you work at utilities? Can you bring your utilities down? <laughs> Can you bring down nope. your entire city with a key oh, stroke? Man, you can't. No brownouts in uh, in Dayton. That's too bad. All right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, all right, Brooke. Well, I'm going to be giving Scott and Brian a topic. They're going to be going back and forth, giving me answers that fit that topic. If one of them gives a wrong answer, a repeated answer, or they take too long to come up with an answer, the win will go to the other player. Your job is to predict who's going to come out on top. Based on the topic today, you are playing for a pair of Steam games, courtesy, uh, courtesy of Wesley. Courtesy. Oh, so courtesy. Thank courtesy. you. So courtesy. Yeah. Oh, courtesy. Uh, you're playing for Townsman, a kingdom rebuilt. God, that sounds like my kind of game where mm -hmm. you you build a kingdom. Yep. And Call of Cthulhu. Oh. Uh, both Is it also your kind games? of game? Eldritch okay, Horror. Okay, just the yeah. standard. Okay. Yeah, just standard horror game. That's cool. Nice. Yep. Uh, all right, so those are your prizes, but to win them, uh, you need, uh, we need to give the boys a topic. Now, here's one of these things, though, that I kind of don't know uh, how, how much of this show the guys watched in the 90s. But uh, uh, today is the 20th anniversary, 21st anniversary of the very last episode of Beverly Hills 90210. Oh, oh yeah. Doesn't it feel like it feels like longer than 21 years ago, right? Doesn't yeah. it? It feels like it uh, man, it feels a lot longer than that. Yeah. yeah. Also, some of us hated that show, so I'm nervous about this, but keep going. Why oh, would good. you hate some that of us, show? Some of us meeting Scott, yeah, sounds like. What did like you it. think about the reboot? Did you I, watch it? No. Hell no. <laughs> I didn't like the source material. I'm not watching the reboot. How about did you watch Riverdale at least? No, my wife loves how Riverdale about, though. She loves. How about it. Melrose Place? Did you watch Melrose Place? Uh, two like two episodes. <laughs> yeah, Melrose Place actually is more accessible, really. 
Yeah. Than uh, 90210. Believe it, was, it or not, it was targeted towards an older uh, audience. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Exactly. Well, they went from teens to high school to like 20s college. So, right. Yeah. Right. Anyway. Right. All right. Uh, anyway. Uh, so back to Beverly Hills 90210. Over ten seasons, we got to meet a uh, a lot a, a large cast of characters, and uh, uh, twenty one of them appeared in fifty episodes or more. Now, um, I'm going to allow, just based on Scott's reaction and response, I'm going to allow uh, both of you to either give me just the character's first name or the actor actress who played good. Oh, good. The actor good, I can do. Good, good, good. Okay. I figure that'll help it's you. It's been a long a time yeah. Yeah. since I've seen the 90210 and I, yeah. I probably would recognize an actor's name before I would recognize You probably the would. Okay, cool. So, yeah. so either uh, actor or first name of the character. I mean, hell, if you want to give me both the names of the character, good luck with that. But, right. uh, uh uh, let's see here. What else? I'll give you. Obviously, you'll still get your starting mulligan. I'll give you guys each one extra mulligan. Here's your yeah. little extra mulligan. There. Here's they had a, extra how, mulligan. In how many? You said more than more Twelve. than fifty episodes. Oh, 50 episodes. oh wow! So just actually, just the you know core what? I'll go, cast. Oh, 40, 40 episodes. Okay. I'm just going to go any anybody that appeared ever on. Yeah, I, I think that's safe. Exactly. <laughs> um, all right. So that is the topic, uh, Brooke. I, I don't know if you could tell how confident. Scott and Brian feel about this topic, like but uh, who do you feel is is got the edge? So oh, I feel like too. Brian I'm as scared when he heard the topic. So <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna go with Brian to win and Scott to go first. All right, so, I like yeah. I like your I think you're you're right where I would be if I were in your shoes. So I think this yeah, is a good that's call. what I would have said too. <laughs> All right, well, let's just Cause, get... Because Scott, because uh, Brad Dunaway didn't go, 90210, hell no. I hate that show. What a bunch of crap. Well, let's go with, uh, let's start with, I don't know what character he played, but um, the late, great Luke Perry. There yeah, Luke Perry. He go. played uh, Dylan McKay, the yeah. bad boy oh, from Across yeah. the Tracks. Yeah, like James, Dil- or like, do like J- James Dean. It was kind of a James Dean kind of thing-ish. Right. Kind of right? was, yep, yeah. exactly. All right, Rebel without good. a clue. Uh, all right, Luke Perry is. Uh, we're off to the races here, Brian. Okay, then if we got to go with the other side, we're going to go with Jason Priestley, and he played. Um, oh, what is his name? Brandon, I Ger- think is that right? Brandon Ger- Geraldine. He did play Brandon. Oh. Brandon Walsh. Right. Yeah. Geraldine wow. Ferraro. Yep, he was. Brandon, uh, he fired on all cylinders. <laughs> Look at that. He, uh, one of the most frequent appearances on the show. He did leave before the last season. And was only shown in flashbacks, but uh, 245 episodes for nice. Mr. Jason Priestley. Okay, let's go with uh, Shark Man, uh, uh, Ian Ziering. Ian Ziering. Oh, yeah. Don't remember his character. Pronounced Ian, Scott. Oh, it's Ian, Ian Ziering. <laughs> Ion. Uh, yeah, Steve Sanders, uh, uh, oh, not just a uh, Beverly Hills 90210 alum, but also, I think, a celebrity apprentice as well. Yeah. <laughs> nice. He played uh, like two, he played like sixteen and was like twenty eight or something when he did it. Right, appeared in all two hundred and ninety two episodes of uh, Beverly Hills nine hundred two one zero. Wow, he was the whole buffalo. Is what he did. He was the he was the whole buffalo exactly. <laughs> all right, done away. Uh, all right, I'm going with uh, 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 Tiffany Amber Thiessen. Oh, very good. She uh, she dropped the amber by the way and is now oh, did just she drop Tiffany it? Thiessen. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, why should she get rid of it? She doesn't like the amber? Nah. I guess not. It wasn't the color of her energy. <laughs> okay. Well, I only know her um, that way. If, if you drop that out, then I don't. I can't recall you. She I know, right? Gone. Yeah, like a three-name. Well, hey, I can remember a three-name uh, performer. But yeah, Tiffany Amber Thiessen appeared. I mean, she was Amber Thiessen back then. Um, mm-hmm. 136 episodes appeared as Valerie Malone. Valerie. Valerie. All right, let's join the um, cast in the fifth season. Yeah, I was going to say she was a late. Oh, was it that late? Oh, you know why? Because um, uh, one eye lower than the other one left. Um, Oh, please. um, That's not nice. Well, that's how I remember. Hold on a second. Uh, (laughs) You you think that's why she left? No, she had a prominent. (laughs) She had a thing where one eye was lower than the other one, and it always just drove me crazy. Uh, uh, Tom Cruise? Shannon. 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 Oh, uh, Shannon. Her name uh, is uh, Shannon. Like my da- uh, my like my daughter or my sister used to say the uh, uh, <laughs> she used to say Dorito this way. Dohotri. Do do Doherty. Doherty. 
Shannon Doherty. Shannon, Shannon Doherty. Very okay. good. He trusts. Yes. <laughs> uh, yep. Uh, Beverly Hills 9210. Of course, Heather's. Uh, she's a little house on the prairie alum. Um, oh, I love yeah. it when she went to, when she did the, uh, uh, was it the Spike Chow that did the, um, oh, the Scare Tactics. Oh, was she in that? She she did like the first couple of seasons of that. I oh, think. I don't remember really? that. Okay. First, no memory of that. the first host. Yeah, I'm sure she Gotcha. Uh, yes, Shannon Doherty, um, <laughs> who's had some major health issues, had uh, fought yeah, uh, breast has. cancer in the yeah. early or the mid-2000s or... Yeah, and I think she's currently another wave of that or something. It's pretty Yes, awful. yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. And but, but, uh, but yeah, Shan Doherty, um, she did. She left in the fifth season when uh Oh, and Amber. Joy. Yeah, she was that the swap sense. out. Yeah. I could have swore that was much earlier. They were two shits passing in the night. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'll get more My heat for now. the eye comment, though. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Dunaway. Your turn. <laughs> going to go with Tori Spelling. Oh, gosh yeah. dang it. Hard to hard to forget Donna Martin, who almost didn't Donna, graduate. Yeah, yeah, she Donna. almost didn't graduate, Brian Dunaway, because of uh, something I can't even remember. You can't even um, remember what the, the another poo-poo. another perma fixture in the show. She appeared in all 292 episodes yeah. of uh, Beverly Hills and Well, Mountain. since I just watched that Kid 90 documentary, it this is helpful because uh-huh. uh, there's a there's a prominent. Um, use of brian austin green in that documentary oh yeah there is. my next one yeah yep uh another another full-timer 292 episodes for david silver yeah who uh he was, was the school was vanilla DJ. without the ice yeah he, he, <laughs> <laughs> he was the school dj and stuff right like they had he their was, own radio yes, thing exactly. That's, oh, so dumb yep so dumb anyway all right, all right. Brian. and i okay so i i know two more i can't remember the character's name you said I could do the character name or character the actor's name. Or name. the actor, actress, yes. Mm-hmm. Or both, if you have them. Or both. That's just a flex if you want to be cool. Ke- That's right, yeah. It was Kelly, <laughs> and I can't remember. Good enough. Close Kelly, enough, I don't, dude. I don't remember her okay, or her real name, so you got her. Well done. <laughs> yeah, Kelly. Uh, she was one of the primary actresses. I know. She I was. Uh, Kelly uh, Taylor, played by Jenny Garth. Jenny Garth! Jenny Garth uh, also ah. appeared on every single episode of the show. Lasted through that whole damn thing. And, uh, How about uh, uh, now? Does like a house flip show with her husband or something? I think Tina's watched a little bit oh, of it. Okay, I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now there's the one that was like 38 when she played 16. <laughs> right. Yeah. And uh, I don't. Oh, the I know what you're talking about, and I, I couldn't think of her name. So I think if you can I think know. Of it, congratulations. <laughs> I, think I can't I, think of the actress or the I character. can't think of either of her. So what if I had a first or last name? That doesn't probably count. Not that I have either of for the, this one. Of the I want character? to go last yeah. name Smith. If I had go the, with either one. Like if I had a ma- first or last name of the character. First, or the, first name of the character is enough. Is enough? Is enough. A is enough? Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, dude. All right, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go obscure, and I don't even think the number's right, but I know I have a strong memory that um, that Steve Buscemi was in this show for oh. a while as a regular role. Now, it may not meet your standard of 40 <gasps> episodes. No, I didn't think about that. Who was so this people? may be a mulligan, but the whoever Steve Buscemi played, it was like a he was like a school vice principal or some shit like that. Golly, I am, I am looking... I, I don't the remember. Wrong thing? We watched. Look, I don't remember we that watched, at all. Uh, through the first like six seasons of it, uh, right? I don't remember that at all. What am I thinking of? I haven't you thought might about be any of, of the Nurse Jackie. I don't know, but uh, I don't remember. And I'm not coming up with Steve Buscemi at all. On uh, damn it! All right, so I get a mulligan. Right. How many mulligans? Right. Your mulligan. Maybe you're thinking of Melrose Place. Do I just get <laughs> a? I just get a mulligan, right? You get a mulligan. You just used up your a mulligan. Why so, am I thinking of Steve Buscemi for? I don't know. I don't know, but I'm trying to fit him in there, and I'm I'm seeing it for some reason, even though I know it's not right. Yeah, like he went undercover or something. Was like, yeah. Oh, I think you're. I think you're thinking of when he was. What was that on? Oh, hello, hello, fellow teenagers. Oh uh, shit! Yeah, what was that? What was that? That's what I'm thinking of. What was that? That is hilarious. Not even close. Uh, (laughs) Was that like a Disney show or something? It was a movie. Uh, Movie. (laughs) 
What's up, people, dudes? People have, you know, the, the meme is already, oh, never been kissed, right? Uh, never already, been kissed. Uh, that is hilarious. Uh, oh, you suck oh, me no, into 30 your rock. reality. I'm sorry, it was 30 Rock, yes. 30 right. Rock. Really? Yeah, 30 Rock. I have he, this uh, image of my, in my head that he's undercover in the school of 902. He does, but it's bad. I mean, it's like, he's like, got a skateboard and... What's up, dudes? Right. Oh, it's... Andrea. Andrea is the girl. Andrea. There you go. Oh, yes, Andrea gosh. Zuckerman. Uh, oh. played, played by the uh, current head of the Screen Actors Guild and a uh, feuder, 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 feuder with uh, feuder? Donald Trump. Feuder? You know what? I always feuder? wondered when like modern memes were going to ruin my memory. It just happened today. Because that's right. a meme with Steve Buscemi. It's got nothing to do with 90210. Why do right. I have nothing to do with 90210? That? Yes. That's I am uh, but, but, really uh, struggling. Andrew Zuckerman, uh, 147 episodes. When did she get out? She got out. At the bitter end. Probably, you know, when she had to go to a nursing home, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> the it's end a, of season five. Yeah, was. I was going to say, at some point they went, you know, you really are starting to look like you're in your 40s. So we have to, you know, you got to graduate. It's ridiculous. Yep. Anyway. All right, Brian. God, I'm gonna be am- I'm gonna be amazed. I'm amazed. If you guys come up with any more, but that, yeah, me too. Because I, I, I can think else is now. Uh, okay, so I've, we've got the the core characters. There's there's parents involved. Sure. And I really can't. I mean, I really can't think. I can see their faces, but I can't think of it. So I might have to fall back to some. Just guessing a first name or something. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that would be fun. Yes. I could. I could. Was there? But a I, I think I'm gonna go with some of the special guest stars. I remember on a very special episode uh-huh. of 90210, and I don't remember how whether this character came up much or not. But I remember Dean Kane being on there uh, oh, a couple really? of times, spreading uh, anti-mask he, propaganda. He, he played. Uh, he played um, Clark. I think <laughs> he played Clark. <laughs> He actually played a character named Rick, uh, but it was only four episodes. So. Oh, oh, times man. that by ten, and you'd have it if you just times it by ten. That's right, Mulligan time. So you Mulligan. got another, uh, <laughs> got another guess. I can't believe I may have Andrea to thank for my uh, right. God, I know my chance. I could see freaking Andrea. Jason Priestley's mom. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> is that is that character name? Um. Yes, that's just, that's her character name, Jason Priestley's mom. <laughs> so, so Brandon's mom. That's how she's listed in the IMDb. Yeah, I Brandon's, Brandon's mom. Your Brandon's mom. I can't do it. Oh, uh, man. Uh, it's not gonna work. Um. <laughs> what, is yeah. That, oh, is that not yeah, your answer? Or what are you doing? Are you... Yeah, yeah. yeah it's definitely my answer. My answer. Oh, well, then you're over. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Uh yeah, no, Jim and Cindy were the parents. Jim and Cindy. I could have made up Cindy something. Walsh. I could have made that up. Jesus. You could have guessed the first name. Yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kathleen Robinson played Claire. She was another long timer. She was David oh. Silver's girlfriend for a long time. Right. Um, Felice uh, Martin played by Catherine Ken. That was uh, uh, Donna's mom. Yeah. Uh, and Gillespie was uh, Kelly's mom played oh, Jackie. Oh yeah. Is that all there is is parents uh, left in the Forty Club? Probably. Um, no. Let's see. Jesse Vasquez was a boyfriend. Is there some peach pit person, like a peach pit runner owner? Well, Nat. Nat ran the peach pit. Joe E. Tata. Or Mm. Tata. I don't know how you (laughs) pronounce it. Tata. He was on uh, 238 episodes of the show. Uh, Jamie Walters played Ray Pruitt. He he pushed uh, Donna down the stairs in a very special episode of 90210. Oh, my Lord. I don't remember any of that. All right. Well, now a lot of my nine hundred two one zero watching was was uh, as I as I did other things while someone else was watching it. So that I would be the best way. Yeah. To, uh, to, to... It was mostly in the peripheral. That was my full absorption. I mean, th- things like if yeah. Luke Perry hadn't have done Fifth Element, I wouldn't probably remember Luke Perry very well. Or you know, like some of those guys went on to do stuff mm-hmm. that made them interesting outside of the show. And uh, like yeah, I keep Marian. forgetting that that. Uh, Luke Perry was in Fifth Element for like a minute at the yeah, very yeah. beginning. Very yeah, beginning. it's not very long. He's, yeah, as, but, an, uh, as an assistant. Yeah, it's super. He's like, this is it. He's light. I, right. This is it. I found I'm finally going to be in movies. Uh, he's in that uh, eight minute. Or what's that? There's, it's right, a, the rodeo. Yeah, yeah the that's actually pretty good. He's all right mm-hmm. in that. 
Like he, I think he had real or eight seconds. He had potential outside eight, of where he kind eight of minutes. Where he kind yeah, of eight minutes. You spend eight minutes on a bull, you're you're damn impressive. <laughs> yeah, eight, eight hours. The then bull is just like, eh, yeah, you win. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I'm going back to bull town. All right. Uh, well done, everybody. Except boy, howdy, we got a we got a loser today. Uh, not, not not our listeners, <laughs> Brooke. You're not a loser. Uh, what we mean is, Brian, you picked the wrong guy is what I'm saying. And it's not your fault. Uh, there'll always be a future chance where you get to pick the right person. Uh, but today is not that day. How do you feel about your devastating loss? I feel fine. I'm just happy I got into it. So. Well, I'm happy yes. you got into it. Well, we're glad you were here, Brooke. Yep. Mm-hmm. If we're ever in Dayton or nearby, we have to, we'll have to hang out. Uh, thanks so much for playing. Hey, Brian, well done. You, uh, you looking forward to the boop show tomorrow? I am going to be great no no not really of course, of course i'm looking forward to the boob show what kind of crazy question is that <laughs> that's a bad question that's almost as crazy as will i water this will i poison the water supply right almost as crazy <laughs> as that but not quite tomorrow we got uh, indie games to talk about some indie news to talk about all kinds of indie indie so be there and enjoy it and it'll be at 3 30 mountain time yeah i've been playing turnip boy commits tax evasion oh yeah, yeah. it is amazing yeah if you like zeldas yeah i've been playing voxel that. tycoon yeah. Which I will also talk Ooh. about. Uh, if you like voxels and uh, tycooning, then I do like voxels. I'm I'm here for you. I've also been playing a lot of that new Mass Effect uh, trilogy almost all yesterday. That's all I did. But uh, it feels good to be back in the presence of Commander Shepard. Anyway, hey Brian, that's great. <laughs> oh, and uh, episode uh, this last weekend on Film Sack, we finally did Predator, the original Predator. Finally. Yes. From uh, 1987. Oh, so, so yeah, if you haven't seen that or heard that yet, you're gonna want to watch that. We oh, finally huge. got to the chopper. Yeah, he got. To we the did choppa. get to the chopper. And while. thank you to uh, to Scott and everybody for letting me bl- play with the. Uh, there will be dungeons. That was also good. Oh yeah, that was great. Weekend. You were awesome yeah. on there, by the way. Everybody really enjoyed it. Brian had a great I need to little go back uh, and listen. That sounds like fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We got a. Uh, eventually, we'll have all the Brians on, but uh, uh, it, was, it was great. He's only our second guest ever, so nice job. You did. You did a good oh, job. Well, good. Shrugs went meh. Okay. Yeah, went, yeah, went meh. His character's name was Shrugs, <laughs> and guess what? He shrugged a lot. <laughs> Shrugs. Yeah. Shrugs the rogue. He was fantastic. All right, Brian, stay out of trouble. Eat your vittles and don't bring down the Greenville power. Boys in the water supply. All right, uh, we got time for a story, so let's do one here. In the news is sponsored by. You'll find quality in our corner. All right, we got the news here brought to you by. Totally will. Brought to you by uh, the Alzheimer's Longest Day Charity thing. That's a thing I'm doing, and uh, we're going to do a live stream playthrough at some point in June, in mid-June. We're figuring out dates and times and stuff of the Oculus game Demio or Demio or Demeo. I don't know how it's pronounced. Mm. But uh, um we get a, a bunch of us together. We're going to be doing a four player uh, live stream and raising money for Alzheimer's. If you want to, if you want to donate early, you really should uh, go to tiny.cc slash Coverville A L Z two zero two one. That's all lowercase Coverville A L Z for Alzheimer's two zero two one. Very nice. I'm looking forward to that. That should be fun. I am too. Um, gotta, pick, gotta pick that thing up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I mean, I've, I've watched a couple of live streams. It looks like a riot. It looks like a it totally does. good time, like it an does. actually legit good tabletop game in VR. So that's what people are saying. Yeah, <clears throat> I need to charge my headset. It's been off for a couple of weeks, and I hope I. Oh. Where is it? There it is. All right, no worries. Hey, a shrunken head artifact. That's in the news. Mm-hmm. Check it out, you guys. Mm-hmm. Shrunken heads. Remember those? Those were a thing for a while. It's a thing. <laughs> um, a shrunken head artifact that was used as a prop in a John Huston film has now been revealed to be. Human! Duh! Yep, it wasn't some prop or fake. It's uh, real. Uh, It's a grim artifact that has been on display for decades in a Georgia university, has been authenticated as human, a human head, taken from a slain enemy by the Amazonian warrior, by an Amazonian warrior, nearly two centuries ago. Uh, Oh, my God. Yeah, uh, Mrs. Prince could not be found for her comment. (laughs) Um, what uh, what what film was this in? That's what I'm trying to find here. Uh, I didn't put it in this part of the article. Let me see if I can Looking find it. the article here. Oh, I yeah, guess a, a long, long t- article. Yeah, it's really it's, long. So like just, they put this in the headline, but then don't give it to us in the first 12 paragraphs. Yeah, and they have the whole shrunken heads were popular and curiosity and keepsakes in some part of the world. But, but, but it's like, I know, but what movie? Oh, here we go. Uh, the 1979 John Huston film Wise Blood. Wise Blood. Uh, a version of the novel by the writer Flannery O'Connor. Ah, look how wise your blood is now. Says Flannery, the, says O'Connor. Flannery O'Connor. 
Uh, hold on, let's take a look at here and see what uh, Wise Blood got on IMDb. 1979, uh, 7.1 out of 10, not bad. Hmm. Got Brad Dorif in there. Ooh. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And and a, and a real uh, head, a real yeah. shrunken head. Actual shrunken head. And But that's just Brad Dorif. Then there was this other shrunken head. <laughs> anyway. He's running a special. He'll give you three heads for one of yours. And I had Ned Beatty in there, uh, William Hickey. Oh, you got it, Ed, you got it. Toy out of that guy. <laughs> Henry Dean Stanton. Look at this cast. The blessing. The yeah. blessing. I mean, Ned Beatty, how, how's he doing? He's alive. Has yeah. anyone checked in on him? Is he all right? See, he was uh, Gene Hackman's sidekick in the Superman movies, right? The yep. first. He also squealed like a pig in. Uh, oh, right, in Deliverance. Deliverance. Sure. Um, let me just quickly look at Ned Beatty today. He's oh, got a, He's what, a thousand? I mean, 37, yeah. that makes him 80-something. Yeah. Oh, he looks great. Well done, Ned Beatty. You look fine. Oh, you know 83. what? 83, 83, Ned Beatty. That makes me happy. Yeah. Ned Beatty looking great for his age. Uh-huh. That's awesome. All right. Him and Hackman still rocking it. I guess. <laughs> that's right. We haven't heard from Gene. I got to stop bringing up these names. They're going to oh, die. What am geez. I doing? Yeah, quit bringing up Gene Hackman. Yeah, that's a bad idea. Anyway, uh, beware of shrunken heads. They might be somebody you know. All right, moving on. We're going to take a break. When we come back, Bill Duran will be joining us. We're going to talk about making things. Before we can do that, though, we got to make music, and Brian brought the music to make it. What do you got? Gene Hackman, 91 right now. Whoa. Whoa. Um, all right, let's go to a brand new album that just came out called uh, Poilen, P-O-I-L-L-E-N. I was going to say pollen because it looks like pollen, but there's an I in there. Mm. Oh, you know what? It's a typo. The first the first mention of the album has an I, but all the other mentions have an, uh, uh, just a spell pollen. Good. Hey, this album comes out June 1st, <laughs> but you're going to hear a, uh, an early track from it, the first uh, single release from this. This is a Brooklyn band called Super Bloom, and... Uh, uh, some of their music sounds like uh, Dinosaur Jr., Nirvana. There's a there's a track on this um, on the single for this first uh, song that is very Nirvana styled. But I'm pulling out a very cool, almost Jose Gonzalez kind of uh, acoustic track for this first song here. This is really really good. The song is Muzzle. Here is Super Bloom. <laughs> Sending a boy to do a man's job. Hey kid. Do you really want to fight with me? If you've got to die for something, this sure as hell ain't it. Beware of rabbits. They eat carrots. This is the Morning Stream. All right, <clears throat> we're back. We have returned. Welcome back, everybody. That song again, Brian. That song is Muzzled by the band Super Bloom. It's uh, from their upcoming album, Pollen. Fantastic. All right. Hey, everybody. Hold tight, because good news. You're going to learn about making shit. And yeah. It's going to come from the mouth, desk, and life of one Bill Durant. <laughs> so let me uh, play his intro. Your bat cave's open there, Bill. Bill Durant joining us from the Pacific Northwest. Good morning, Bill. How are you? Good morning. Doing good. Oh, that's fantastic. You sound great. You sound awake and ready and, and living it. Just living the dream over there. You know it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah always. Uh, Bill comes from PunishedProps.com, a company he founded all about making and uh, being creative and cool props and all sorts of rad stuff, including a really cool YouTube channel that if you're not already following, then what are you doing? Freaking get it in gear and get over there. Hey, uh, Bill, what do you have for us today? Oh, I've got a really fun topic here. Um... I know that uh, some people, I'm not going to point any fingers, but some people on this Discord call uh, are serial uh, content creators who start new, I'll just say, let's just say podcasts every, like on a whim. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. Uh Uh Uh-huh. And um, every time you start or if you've been working on a sort of a new creative endeavor Mm -hmm. for a while, sometimes you might try to think like, well, how do I, how do I make this thing? So that it's not like all the other stuff that's out there, mm-hmm. but it's still mm-hmm. very much like me, right? Something mm-hmm. very personal, something that I like a lot. Um, that could be like a podcast, YouTube channel, 
a webcomic, a novel, short story, paintings, any sort of creative endeavor that's going to go on for a while. Right. Uh, so this is something I put a lot of thought into because I have a YouTube channel I've been running for a long time. In fact, December will be the 10 year anniversary of starting my YouTube channel. Jeez. Which is kind of bananas. Yeah. Yeah. That's that cool. Fast. Um, so there's this really fun and cool exercise that I learned from my buddy Brian Brushwood, who learned it from his buddies, a pen and teller, that they use to develop their stage show, their magic sh stage show. Mm -hmm. The idea is that you l take a look at what's out there, right? The other creative things that are similar to what you're making. So when they did it, they looked at all the other stage magic shows out there. And they watched a lot of them. And they made a list of all the stuff about stage mag magic that they didn't like. <laughs> mm -hmm. They basically let let their hate be their guide. Mm. <laughs> they, uh, they dipped their toe into the dark side and... Uh, they were able to come up with a list of things that they just didn't want to do in their show that everyone else was doing. All the tropes, mm -hmm. you know, magic tropes. Mm -hmm. and white they... tigers. Exactly, yes. What? No white tigers. They only want orange tigers. <laughs> only okay. orange tigers, yes. Yeah. Um, and they were able to develop a show that was very personal to them because it was choices they made depending on what they liked or not. Uh, and it didn't look like anything else that was out there at the time. Mm. Uh, so we did the same thing for our YouTube channel uh, quite a few years ago. Uh, we watch, well, we already watch a lot of YouTube videos. And if you are looking to get into, let's say, a pod podcasting, you should be listening to a lot of podcasts, right? Mm -hmm. You should mm -hmm. really see what's out there and really get an idea for what your taste is. Sure. Yeah. That's so we the did other, the th same thing. The other thing sometimes is just to... A simple Google search sometimes. <laughs> mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah because the problem I've run into before is I'll think I've had the most brilliant idea ever, and I can't believe no one's done it. And the minute you think that, in the modern age, mm -hmm. you need to go look because there's a really strong chance somebody else has already done it or done it in a yeah. way that you at least need to see it and go, oh, well, that's okay because I'm going to go this direction with it, and that's different, yeah. makes it kind of new, plus, you know, I'm bringing my own – style to it and blah 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 so you can you can still navigate your way through that but looking for a thing that nobody anywhere anytime has ever done before freaking good luck with that it's tough yeah, yeah, if somebody, yeah. yeah so, so if somebody's done before do it better if nobody's done it before do it yep yeah <laughs> you either have to be the first or best <laughs> right yeah. exactly that's right um so so yeah even if you do find something that's very similar to what you thought you wanted to make it's worth dissecting it and picking it apart and it's very possible for you to make your own version of it that is like i said it's still very personally you and still very different um so a few years ago we actually took a class with brian um in texas with the wizard academy which is a business school that is awesome and and i love it and uh, we did this exercise. We, we analyzed our YouTube channel. We analyzed a, a lot. We would watch a lot of maker YouTube channels, right? So we were able to pick apart the things that people do in their videos that we don't prefer, that we don't like. Mm -hmm. I, I think hate's a little bit strong of a word, but <laughs> sure. Uh, for me anyway. Uh, so we made this giant list. So for here's a, here's a few examples. Um, I don't like watching a, a video that uh, a maker video that isn't comprehensive, right? Right. Where um, it isn't clear. It feels like they skipped filming some of the steps, right? Yeah. Maybe mm -hmm. maybe it feels a little bit more like an overview of the build process. And those videos are fine. There's nothing wrong with those videos. It's just I don't want that for my videos. Right. Um, I also don't like when people use colloquial terms or like local terms or, or whatever for especially for materials or tools give me an example uh, like uh, uh here in minnesota we call a piece of wood uh old jimmy john or whatever like what do you mean like uh we're using right. rubber, rubber strap for rubber this strap. Uh, for this part. <laughs> so <laughs> so for example brand names will frequently get used so barge is a brand of context cement that we use all the time problem is it's only available pretty much here and well there are lots of places in the world where it's not available, and our YouTube mm -hmm. videos go out to lots of people in the world. So I use the term contact cement, right? Instead of mm -hmm. saying barge. Uh, usually, I try I try to, so that when people are doing a Google search for glue in their area, they just look for contact cement, which is the more generic term, and they may find a brand of contact cement where they live. This is just an example. Yeah. Um, so I put a lot of effort into that. Like when we were making our videos, I try very hard not to use colloquial terms or brand names. I try to use 
terms that people can then Google search for to go find it where they live. Uh, I also really don't like when people are working on something really intricate and they don't show a very close-up shot of it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, come on, I want a real close, detailed shot of that thing you're working on. But a lot of times people will leave the camera on a, on a tripod uh, when they're filming and they don't consider, oh, I should move my body closer to the camera so I can get a better shot of this. Sure. sure. So again, that's something we put a ton of effort into when we're doing our filming. And we have... You know, Brittany does the filming, so she can move closer and stuff, and she can think to do that while she's working, which is really cool. That's uh, awesome. Uh, one more, one more uh, fun example. Um, just a just a silly thing about YouTube videos that bugs me. Mm -hmm. I don't like when people reference the like the title of their own YouTube video. So when you when you, you start watching the video and the first thing the person says, well you've already watched the or you've already read the title, so you know what I'm about to say. I'm like, don't even say any of that. Just just go into just the get video. right to it. Yeah. Just skip that yeah. part. This is my yeah. number yeah. one problem with all of YouTube. Get to the meat. Get straight yes. right, to the right, meat. Right. I don't need another introduction. I clicked on you because it said in the title, uh here's how to you know get your car to fart twice or whatever. I know what I want. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm here. You already. don't need to tell us. You don't need to tell us. Oh, this is a video I've been wanting to make for a really long time. Right, right, finally yeah. get a chance to do it. Yeah. And a thousand same, people have asked me to make this video. Right. No, the same thing goes it. for like written articles like this. Like get, mm -hmm. get to the yes. meat of the thing. I don't need all the fluff. And now there may be there may be a case or two where explanation is needed. I'm not saying there isn't. But oh sure, yeah. Most of you the do time, need it. You do need to set up a premise for your story. That's very important. You should. Yeah. Yes. You should explain why it is you're making the thing you're making. Um, but, but the, the sort of self-referential, like, Hey everybody, I want to point out that we're watching a YouTube video on the internet. I'm like, just ignore all that. Just skip all that. Just talk directly to your audience. They've already read the title. They've already looked at the thumbnail. You worked really hard on those things. That's why they clicked on the video. Just get right into yeah. it. Well, I understand so, the tendency. Like, I don't want to fault people too hard because I get the feeling of like, I sort of need to describe the problem again and then tell them the solution. Yeah. But yeah. you don't because... This is the new part of uh, the kind of media we share with each other today is we know what the problem is because we search for that problem. We, and now yeah, you're going yeah. to answer my problem. And if you answer it well and quickly, I'm going to subscribe to your channel because I know I'm going to get quick, good information here. Mm -hmm. Finding good channels on things like, I don't know, Photoshop tips or uh, take anything where you're just looking for a good resource on, oh, yeah, that's a bug. Here's how you get around or whatever. The ones that get to the damn point are the ones I subscribe to every time mm, yeah, yeah and i still like them for their personalities i still like them for their entertainment value it's not like that stuff can't exist it's just you don't have to you don't have to read me the encyclopedia entry before you mm -hmm. tell me the answer <laughs> right. yeah yeah apparently it did tally uh, put this in the chat room it's known as the wadsworth constant if you go to 30 yeah. percent forward in the video like skip the first just drag your little slide of the 30 percent mark in the video that's when you'll get to the important stuff of the video so you have to wait <laughs> for the top to see how much they're going to launch into the description and like, oh this is one of those 30 percent in yep. you're good yeah. yep exactly okay, yeah so yeah wow. uh so we 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 did that like i said we we did that example or that uh, exercise years ago and we've slowly changed how we make our youtube videos in fact Compared to five years ago, the way we make them now is is unrecognizable. Hmm. Completely different process, and the end product, I think, is much, much better. Uh, but not only that, we're going to find the other people who hate all those things, too, and appreciate that we make videos that don't include them. Nice. Um, we'll, we, will, we will attract more people that like the thing that we're into. Uh, that seems to have worked. Seems to have worked. Yeah, and I think you, uh, if anything, you guys are emblematic of of uh, what I like because I usually what I get with you is I'll hop in and you'll go hey you know this gun from such and such movie you think is cool and then there's a picture of it and I'm like yeah I do like I do that gun is cool we're making one of those and then you start making yeah it. yeah yeah I like that That's I appreciate that I don't need a, it's, a, you know. it's a very simple premise for most of our videos I'm like hey I'm Bill there's a thing in the world that doesn't exist and I want it to exist, so we're going to do that today. All right, let's go. That's yeah, mostly yeah. all of our stories are that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a single sentence and you're in, and then it's the process that people are there for. In your case, exactly. So yeah, uh, yeah. I also yeah. I've also learned that people aren't here to see my face. 
Um, I used we used to shoot our videos where I would talk at the camera for a bunch, and then I'd have some B-roll that I just chucked over it of the build process. Yeah. And every time I could look at the the retention data, every time the video cut back to my face, people were like, "Nah, I'm out of here," <laughs> and just leave. <laughs> So we're like, okay, every bit of the video must be fabrication. Got it. See, so and that's keep so, that camera seems, on my hands. It seems counterintuitive, right. right? But it's it's it, if you think about it, it makes sense. Like they're yeah. su- they're there for such a directed reason that if you're not giving them that thing, and in some videos cases, their face is the reason. Like you mm-hmm. you do mm-hmm. want to yeah, go. Yeah. I guess you want to see Logan Paul's face. I don't know, but my point is like I don't whatever I punch Logan Paul's face. <laughs> Well, now he has professional boxers do that, so it's fine. <laughs> That's true, yes, exactly. But yeah, like the talking head is is good for when you want a talking head, but but you're 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 totally right. And sometimes you just don't know that stuff until you've tried it and went, Oh, we're okay, this is what people prefer yeah. and And you and you're trying to find the cross section of the things you like to do on video and the things that other people like to watch on video. Um and and you may have to. You may find something you really like that's totally you, that makes your videos really fun for you, that no one else likes. You, you have go. to decide. Well, do I keep that in my videos or not? Right? Do I want that to be a thing? Do I want that to be the thing that prevents some people from watching my video, even though I like doing it a lot? Right. And those are the weird kind of decisions you have to make once you've been, you know, working on a creative endeavor like this for a while so when is your uh, korean cosmetics channel launching when are you gonna get into that <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm excited <laughs> i watch bill do that every day uh all right well this is great uh great advice and um you know recently ran up against this sort of thing myself so it's always just good to be thinking that way sometimes it's easy to go oh i have a thing i would love to do but it isn't necessarily something people would love to see or love to listen to. Right, right. So you got to yeah. just balance that. Maybe it's okay yeah. if all you're trying to do is just seek out precisely what you want, then okay, do that. You should do that. But mm-hmm. if your goal is to like grow audience or expand, you know, what you do or or whether it's monetize something or whatever, you have to think about those things mm-hmm. and not just go, "Well, I want to do it, so therefore I'm doing it." It doesn't always work. So uh, good advice all around. Bill, do you have a bonus link for us this week? I sure do. Great. Uh, Alex Steele, the blacksmith, is making a wooden chair, or he made a wooden chair with his dad. What? He had a little three-part oh, video series. If you look but up he's Alex a blacksmith. Steele. Blacksmith. Blacksmiths I know. don't work with wood. I'd, or they're dads. really breaking the oh. mold. Yeah. <laughs> they don't work with so dads. His dad, his, his dad makes wooden chairs, yeah. and he's been doing it for decades, and he's really good at it. Uh, so Alec went and hung out with him, and they made a chair together, and it's really, really uh, uh, oh, heartwarming. Like yeah, you've sent us videos by this guy before. Yeah, yeah. Alec's awesome. This is a, ho- yeah. a wholesome dude. I like him. Uh, yeah, go check that out. in a box behind him. That's right. He does. He has dogs. He has. They have an old wood shop. It's a super cute video. He has a lot of hair compared to his dad. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, and cut your own tree. Fantastic. All right. Woo! Yeah, yeah. They wow. they did everything. Like literally made it from scratch it's that's wicked. amazing that's so cool oh yeah his channel's got a lot of views all right well he's he's okay. doing good uh, oh they're showing cutting the tree and it's in the first 30 percent of the video i would have missed this yeah <laughs> yeah see brian don't do your 30 percent jump just yet don't do my wadsworth uh all right yes Ooh, exactly. he does like thatching and uh what do you call that wicker stuff Bees, bees. All right. <laughs> uh, build a rant, everybody. PunishProps.com is the place to go. Punish Props on um, YouTube as well. And, of course, if you would like to follow his daily musings on Twitter, you can find him at Chinbeard. Bill, thanks for hanging out with us, and we'll see you next time. See ya. Bye. Right. Bye. This looks like a nice old dad. Totally. I like nice old dads. That's nice workshop, too. Look at that. I wish my dad was around. That'd be cool. All right. Uh, let's now... Uh, slink our way into fun town um okay a couple things going on today <laughs> schleicher is a no go today's in a meeting so okay. i thought it'd be fun to finish reading these questions that we got on our pm episode oh that we didn't have time. cool yeah you were talking about copying them out to use them for a later uh, show this is that later show this is the later show guys this is it so let me play the theme oh that's the people's court hold on uh where the hell did it go? It's definitely not the people's court. Oh, I'm doing a bag of salad. That's not you. Oh, that is you. That's <laughs> I mean, that you. is me, but that's not what you're looking for. No, where is it? 
Smoke weed every day. No, that's fine. We'll play that. We'll use that. Yeah, um, that. Here are some quick questions that we were asked by patrons. And if you'd like to be a part of this uh, ridiculousness, you can join the Patreon. If you haven't already, patreon.com slash TMS. And there's a few we didn't get to. For example, Robert Harrington wrote in. Brian, I'm going to give this one to you because this just feels like a you question. Oh, okay. Let me make sure I'm right. giving the right credit here. I think it's the top... I take it back. It's Miravina, I guess. The, the way the way these are okay. formatted, I can't tell whose names was mm. what, but I think this is Miravina. Gotcha. What's a music album you consider to be perfect? Oh wow! A perfect album, Brian, is what we're looking for. A here. Perfect album. Um, got it. well. I mean, to go. Let's let's go with an easy one, and then I'll go with a more obscure one. Um, easy one is uh, uh, the Beatles' Abbey Road. Mm. Like it is solid from start to finish right like you get uh you get the pop songs at the beginning and then most of the second half is like a um is like one continuous song that just con uh, phase from uh one to the other and yeah. so abbey road is kind of that easy one um a little bit um more off the beaten path is uh the posies dear 23 album mm. um that is it's not a concept album but it just feels like it does kind of tell a story and um, uh, that's one that I, that, you know, I don't listen to singles from that album. I listen to the whole thing start to finish. Um, some other ones people are mentioning Pet Sounds by the Beach Boys is a great one. Good, good pull, Kelly138. Mm -hmm. um, that's another one I'll listen to start to finish. Big Audio Dynamite to the Globe oh, is yeah, another good really one. Good. Starts with uh, Rush, but... And you get all you get all the singles at the beginning, but then after that, it's just like, oh, this is some good solid, mm -hmm. solid music. After that, if I had to pick one, I'll just pick a one that I always go back to and, and never get tired of. I think that qualifies. Mm -hmm. yeah. I never get sick of listening to American Idiot by Green Day. Oh, I love yeah. that album. I love it. I love yep. the whole thing. I love the especially the the extended edition one that's just got like uh, like Boulevard of Broken Dreams and mm -hmm. Holiday. Is it Holiday? A holiday whatever it is those two songs are actually one big giant song people don't realize that they were cut out they were cut in half for singles right it's one big contiguous thing and it's like there it's almost like their wall kind of um that whole album like it is that. it is a concept album yeah jesus of suburbia is huge big long song and it's amazing i really like that 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 album i could listen to it anytime a good album as oh, albums go i have plenty of songs like this question. right oh yeah that's a good one yeah but like there's plenty of songs where i'd go oh there's a song i could always listen to or there's a whatever i could listen right. to gay bar any minute i'd love that song <laughs> i want to take you to a gay bar i love that song Hilarious. love yeah. it it's so good and then i really like uh i love i love weedus's teenage dirt bag i could listen to that song anytime Anytime. Right, but does the whole album hold up? No, probably not. As no, much. not yeah. even close. But that yeah. one song is this. It's the story of my youth. Mm -hmm. It's the it's it's mm -hmm. it's kids in the eighties trying to get a girl to like them. It's so amazing. It's an amazing yep. song. Anyway, yeah, Hall and Oates. I'm sure that's we're all going to agree with that one. Hall and Oates. Oh, Peter Gabriel's So album. That's a good one. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, been caught stealing when I was five. Jane's Addiction. Yeah, there's. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's plenty of great songs. Full albums, that's trickier. Yeah. And I just, I, this last weekend I was listening while I was painting, uh, listening to Father of the Bride by Vampire Weekend, which is oh, another good one, yeah. solid from start to finish, thanks to uh, one of the Heim sisters um, being in a lot of those songs on there. And and as, as recent examples go, um, I swear by um, Hollywood is Bleeding by... Uh, that entire album by Post Malone, I can is so re-listenable. Mm. I can listen to that anytime, and it sounds weird to give it an album that new and also you know, hip hop dude sort of give him that kind of credit. But I think that album's great. I could listen That's to it. Cool. I've never it's, listened to it. I'll listen to the whole thing. I know I know the singles, but I don't know any of the uh, the rest it, of the it's stuff. Great. So. I mean, you got Ozzy in there. You got some. Uh, you got some other cool stuff. Yeah, the Tron soundtrack's great. There's plenty of good ones. Um. All right. Here's one from, uh, oh, Jesse Call has this question. Our, our, oh, our my jerky our dealer, jerky provider. Yeah, <laughs> my enjoyed track. a piece of that jerky last night while we were watching uh, uh, my recommendal for this week. 
See, well, Lindenade, we're going to have words. Lindenade 3000 says, Post Malone's voice is not a voice. Uh, that's a weird thing to say. <sighs> that guy can sing. Like, legit. Lindenade is really, some days, looks like uh, they're trying to take the title away from Dice Tomato. Yeah, Dice Tomato, are you, are you catching? Is that what's going on? That's, uh... <laughs> no, he... You can say that, but I don't know if you guys are actually listening. Go listen to that newer album, and you and you and you find the auto tune. I can't. It's really good. All right, doesn't matter. His covers are great. His his smells like Teen Spirit and um, the, uh, the 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 recent one with um, Darius Rucker. Uh, Post Malone did a cover with Darius Rucker. Oh, oh, the the Pikachu thing. Pikachu yes. thing. I only want to be with you. Yeah, that's yeah. him singing, man. Would, yeah. I was hearing a little out of tune in that one. But Kara, listen, look at this. Scott's taste in music is atrocious. I like everything. <laughs> so you're saying my taste in music, which is very broad. I like some classical. I like stuff all the way over into some, you know, hardcore metal. I like stuff, everything in between. I like new age. I like new wave. I like everything. I don't, there's not a kind of music I don't like. And he yeah. says I have bad taste in music. I have taste. <laughs> I literally have taste in music. <laughs> <laughs> I taste it all. The buffet is for me. That's right. That's funny. <sighs> what a load. Oh, no, right. don't don't uh, let Begira get you. Don't don't let him crawl. I'm not gonna here. eat that. I'm gonna eat that bait. He's pulling that. He's pulling that hook. Some country I'd like. Yes, Maravina. I especially like uh, bluegrass and like older style country. I love that stuff. All right. Uh, here's uh, uh, what uh, what song would describe your current mood? Says Jesse. Your mm. Current mood, wow. Brian. Current mood. Well, after all that, uh, it's. Uh, Something with screaming in it. No, mm. current mood. Jeez. So, like, if I said, all right, what what mood am I in? Um, uh, Betty Blue by Phases. Oh, very nice. Because um, it's like uh, this anticipation, like, uh, you know, in four days I'm getting on a plane and flying somewhere. I'm a little nervous about plane. I don't know why. I, I, you know, I've been in restaurants. I've been in groups and that sort of thing. So it's not a big deal. But... Um, there's a a going on vacation vibe to that song that I just really really like, and uh, that is my current mood right now. I think my mood is split between Dead Mouse and his new track with Rez called Shit. What's it called? Hold on, I'm gonna find this because it's a great recommendation. Uh, but Dead Mouse and Rez, two of my favorite electronic artists right now, did a combo called and if i could just find it here we go by artist uh that song is called hypnocurrency hmm. and it's freaking great it's so drivey beady awesome and i, I like just want i like the name hypnocurrency yeah it's pretty it's good great. and i just want to crank that up in my car sunroof down and drive just drive that's what i want to do right now with that song that's the mood i'm in but a little bit of teenage dirtbag as well I'm feeling that right now. <laughs> Just kind of a melancholy sort of, you know, I don't know. One of those things. But yeah, y'all should be listening to that hypnocurrency. It's fantastic. All right. Cool. Even if you don't like Dead Mouse normally, there's something in this one. Well, it's probably Rez, but it's a really good collaboration. Uh, all right. Next question. We got um, uh, somebody else says I have a top 40 like of music. What are you talking about? Don't don't get don't get on there. You're uh, Lennon Aid. You should see my playlist. You're an insane person. All right, moving on, moving on. Brian, what's your okay? Brian, this is rapid fire. You can't you can't hesitate on this, All right, these okay. questions. No hesitation. What is your favorite color? Uh, red. Smell. Uh, chocolate chip cookies, fresh baked. Food. Sushi. I was hoping to say chocolate chip cookies, fresh baked. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Don't give me any sushi that smells like chocolate chip cookies, though. No. I'll be freaked out. No. Uh, all right. Uh, how about this one? What would you call your own cryptocurrency, says Brian Mitchell Young? <laughs> um, well, hypnocurrency oh, is not bad. That's but great. Um, let's see. Um, what would we call it? We uh, If it was TMS, it would be called Chester Coin. Chester Coin. Chester Coin. Chester Coin. That's great. <laughs> yeah, if it's just cover, Coverville, Cover Coin's easy. Yeah, yeah, I didn't want to go with the obvious. I was, uh, uh, Splooge coins. 
Oh, now they're saying I'm easy to bait. I just got to hide the chat room. I'm hiding you. You do? Goodbye. Look at you. Yeah, Goodbye. Exactly. Sometimes you guys are jerks, and today you're being jerks. All right, moving on. Not all of you. Some of you are fine. Some of you are being buttholes. All right, moving on. How about this one? What's yeah. the deal with Ovaltine, says Brian Mitchell Young. I don't know. Yeah, it's somewhere between 13 and 19 is Ovaltine, and I can't figure out where where to put it when I start counting above 12. Yeah, it's that one prime number I just can't get my head around. <laughs> That's right. Uh, uh, what do you mean, what's the deal with Ovaltine? It's a delicious uh, malty chocolatey beverage. It is indeed. Um, I just can't do the regular milk anymore. I don't know how that stuff does. I guess it'd probably be fine in almond milk. There you go. Uh, JK Grub would be, and oat milk would be all right in that. I'm all about the oat, oat milk, milk now. Yeah. yeah, I like the oat milk. Love it. Uh, JK Grammar asked, "What? Uh, what's the piece of art slash 3D printing you're most proud of? Um, Art-wise, for me, probably... Mm. I don't know if I have a single thing. Um, geez. Uh, I don't know. There's... Uh, per, well... I'm I'm probably most proud of that comic compilation book I did in 2015. Uh, so I'll just yeah. say that whole book. There's a lot of art in there, and I know this is a cheap answer, but I don't really have a thing where I'm like, now that's my okay. I got one. Uh, recently, I did the the dude that runs like an alchemy stand in like a fantasy setting, and I drew this guy out front. He's blind, and there's like a snake in front of him, and then behind him's all these like oddities, like skulls and claws and weird stuff and it's super detailed out i think i'm pretty proud of that one so there you go i don't even know what that's to call cool. that one but i'll i'll say that one brian do you have a, a 3d print you're like oh, a 3d man. print see that's a weird one because most of the 3d printing i do is something somebody else came up with mm -hmm. but um i mean i did oh there's not an easy way to lift this thing up is there oh there is okay i created this is something i designed made several iterations of and finally um printed and then put online but is this it's this apple phone holder that is um works with magsafe so basically you just put your you put your phone on there oh yeah like that and it holds it and you can even you know strong enough you can turn it sideways look at that right that's very cool um and then you you go buy a washer from ace hardware like mm -hmm. one of these big heavy brass washers yeah and you put it in there and it it's got enough weight that it holds this thing down on your desk so it doesn't slide around when you like i can pull the uh uh pull my phone off of there without just pulling the whole thing apart that's really cool I like so that's the thing the other the other thing i'm proud of is a um a spoon holder that we have by our coffee setup upstairs that um, holds the spoon in a vertical position over a slightly uh, concave surface, but d the spoon doesn't sit in its own coffee swill, right? It mm. just like uh, um, it just hovers uh, above it. And so I actually had to use our current spoons, figure out the size, get dimensions, and that sort of thing. But uh, current spoons is a cool band name. <laughs> Current spoons would be my uh yeah, my what oh, would be my cover band. My uh, let's think. Current spoon. Oh, I know. It's your um it's your um your Chris Cornell cover band. Oh, you, there you go. Yes. Spoon man. That's the only comparison I can go. Sure. Uh -huh. Spoon yes. man. Nope, you haven't distracted me at all, Claire. She's always distracting. Me. She's trying to like all caps. Brian, hi, hello. And, no, oh, she's not, trying to do it. She's making the effort. I see. She is exactly. Well, I wouldn't know because I know you're not watching I'm, anymore. Yeah. So like they're going to try and get to you there via me. Yeah, I'm currently hiding the chat room. So. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, like you do. All right, one. Uh, let's do one more of these. Uh, we got one from. Uh, here we go. Okay, That's I know fun. that Brian has gigs and gigs of songs. This says this is from Graham Cracker, gigs. but how many yep. gigs of gifts does Scott have? Well, <laughs> yeah, because you pull in new ones all the time to like promote the shows and stuff. I right? do. Um, I make um, my own kind sure. of basically. Yeah. Um, I prefer making my own, but um, sometimes they come from like a weird TikTok video I saw, or like a fail video, or something we did, or something from one of the film sack movies or whatever. Film sack usually. Yep. Uh, but I don't. Here's the funny bit. I only keep around probably 12 gifts for like twitter answers hmm. like if i'm going to mute somebody i have some very creative mute gifts i love using those <laughs> right 
Um, but mostly I keep them on the cloud. I have an account on Giphy and they all stay up there. So yeah, which is a smart place, a smart place to store it all. Well, yeah. Plus, if I could keep all my music up there, I would, but I can't. Right. I can't. And, and gifs are big. They're as big as songs are. Like a, a little two second gif can be five to eight megabytes. So mm-hmm. why keep that all on a hard drive? There's no real point to it. So it's all in the cloud, and I can get to it anytime That's I right. need to. So that's what currently I by the way 657 gigabytes of music of songs and that doesn't include um andrew allen stuff that doesn't include you know archived songs that i got out of my library just to keep it from being super bogged down you when you hit a terabyte that'll be a cool day we should talk it'll about be a that cool when day happens. yes yeah when that happens we should make a giant deal out of it on here <laughs> you know just celebrate Yes. And we'll have a celebration to raise money for a uh, an external uh, SSD to put it all on. Perfect. Okay, here is a, ma- a Monday morning mashup. Now, I've been uh, excited cool. to play this for a bit because Jamie's given me all kinds of like early warning that it's awesome. So um, They always are, so I don't know why he would wonder if I thought it would be great, but it's probably great. So here it is. It's called Nicolisms. 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 Sorry, Nicolisms. That's hilarious that I said that wrong when it's all about. <laughs> how, how appropriate, yes. Yeah, exactly. that worked out great. So here it is. Enjoy. Press the space bar. Oh, space bar. Uh, ooh, eh, uh, oh, oh, the space bar on the... Uh, ooh, yeah. uh, Claire's not even in this game <laughs> and is playing this game so freaking hard. Man. <laughs> What was the movie with um, oh, the road. Keira, Keira Knightley and Steve Cantrell? Cantrell? <laughs> St- Cantrell? I don't know. St- who? Keira Knightley and Steve who? Carell? Steve Carell? Steve Carell? <laughs> it was... oh, it's been a while since we've had a good Nicoleism. Yeah, that's um, good. Who's the speedy guy? Uh, yeah. Run Bummer. Um, <laughs> Whatever his name is, yeah. Sp- speed Man. What is it? Lightning McQueen. A-Train, that's it. A-Train, A-Train. <laughs> You mean it's not Run Bummer? I can't imagine that it wasn't Run, run bummer. bummer. We ate your wiener. It was fine. You're our next contestant on The Price is Wrong, bitch. Thank you, Shaved Max. Uh, that yeah. was probably one of my favorite end of the world movies. Hold on. Who's Shaved yeah. Max? Shaved Maddox. Shave... <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I... <laughs> Shaved Maddox. Got it. All right. No, you're fine. You're good. I just, I didn't see the Shaved Max Fury Road. <laughs> Not so furry road. There we go. Shaved Max, not so furry road. Oh, why is it so funny? Oh, did I forget to take that out? Sorry. All right. Uh, yes, it's my maid, Claire Gack. Her name is Kim Johnson. <laughs> I married my maid. Physically correct boy doll is their words. Yeah, just say he has a penis. Yeah. Golly. Just, yeah. you know. It's weird. Physically just correct say that boy he's got doll. a meat head. Yeah. <laughs> His head is of meat. He is of meat. He's got a meat head. Yeah, he is. I mean, it's because you wear the hats and the shirts and the funny stuff and like nerdtacular be, or whatever. Right? Pimps wear funny hats. Yeah. Every fine. single time you say Gerard, I think Gerard de Batu. De Batu. <laughs> de Batu. <laughs> Gerard de Batu. <laughs> Gerard. I'm just going to stop talking to you. Gerard de Badi da Badai. Is that the... But every time you say Gerard, I think of the Gerard... I'm not even going to try. I'm the worst. Depardieu? Depardieu. Yeah. Depardieu. Depardieu is pretty close. Okay, yeah. Maybe knobs is not the right word. I should have used Zoe for you UK listeners. Yeah, that's a penis. That is a penis. Yeah. Yeah, Knob. Stick your knob. I guess you don't want to say in your gob because that's a whole different thing. Well, because a gob is your mouth, see? A gob is your mouth. Yeah. Exactly. So you don't want to put your gob near your knob. Yeah. Tim Horton got the superpower of invisible lightning. In the daytime, he's Tim Horton. At night, he's Invisible Lightning. He's Timbits. Timbits. He's got the best coffee, and he'll save you from a fire. <laughs> Here I go. Don Cheeto, Dermot Rickrolly. <laughs> Can't even say it. <laughs> Patrick Warbutton, uh, Meredith Steenberger. Uh-huh. I don't really know. We need to get you at the Oscars is announcing. <laughs> Steenberger. And your nominees are. Give me a list of names, and I'll just start reading them. Maybe oh. that'll make some people happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'd do an entire like episode with her just reading Hollywood names. Absolutely, yes. So good. Um, all right, well, Nicole, thanks for letting us have fun at your expense. You need we to do a celebrity it. gossip podcast with Nicole. I'm all in. All right, that's it for the show, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Patreon.com slash TMS will help this thing stay on the air. So please head over there and support us if you haven't already. And as always, I always mention this, but I'm just going to pound it in until your brain hurts. Frogpants.com slash TMS. Ouch, that hurt my brain. Mm-hmm. All right, Uh, that is it, I believe. Um, As I mentioned, 4 p.m. today, the live scream of Resident Evil 8 begins, 
And uh, if you want to watch that nonsense, it'll happen then at frogpants.tv. So be here for that. And a uh, new TMS tomorrow and, uh, you know, a whole week of stuff. And ex- if you don't count Thursday. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, a whole week of stuff, but only really the first three-fifths. Yeah, it's really the first three-fifths <laughs> of the week uh, before Brian and I are out of town. But uh, we appreciate you all uh, letting us do that. And uh, we look yeah, forward we to coming back and telling stories about all the weird stuff we saw. Hopefully mm-hmm. nobody cutting themselves on a pipe. All right, Brian, let's uh, yeah. let's get out of here with some sort of, uh, oh, I don't know, music, I guess. Music, uh, some sort of a music. Uh, Chris, a.k.a. Mr. Kai in the chat room wrote in, said, Dear Headmaster and Guy in the booth. Wow, we're going back. Yeah. As I turn the age of the answer to life, the universe, and everything, I figure it's time for another birthday request. But this time, I would like to change things up. I would like to request a cover from either of the punk bands that I've discovered recently, either from Boy Hero or One Last Night. Uh, I would really appreciate it. Since my birthday is on May 15th and it's on a Saturday, any day from May 17th to the 18th would be great. (laughs) Wow. Very specific. Much respect and thank you for all the amazing shows. Kitako na kung bakit mo siya gusto, which is I can definitely see why you like it, translated from Filipino. Oh, wow. Let's hear how that sounds in English. I can definitely see why you like it. Pretty, pretty accurate. Nice Pretty job. accurate. Yeah, yeah. Sounded, sounded accurate. Uh, very cool. Yeah, so thank you for letting me know about these bands. I hadn't heard Boy Hero or uh, Our Last Night. I think he, he wrote one last night, but I found it on here as, as Our Last Night and a bunch of great covers. Um, I was really trying to decide between Wait For It from Hamilton or uh, How Far I'll Go from uh, Moana, the Disney movie from Boy Hero. I'm going with the latter. We're going with How Far I'll Go because it is just such a great song. Here is Boy Hero, a single that they released in 2017, a cover of that song from Moana called How Far I'll Go. Van's favorite uh, favorite film, by the way. Loves that movie. Is it really? Oh, That's he great. loves it. He's always going, Moana? Moana? You're welcome. Yep. <laughs> hey, Moana, you make way. Like He, he doesn't sing it. But he, yeah. he loves it. But he loves Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, he good. loves it. It's a good movie, so I don't blame him. All right, that's it. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day. We'll see you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. Get to the chopper! Oh. Oh, there it is right there. Oh. The yes, ch- do. The do get to the chopper. The chopper with Tom Hopper. Hopper. <laughs> Wait, who's right. the musician Tom Hopper? Who am I thinking of? You're thinking of uh, Hoppus.